Good morning and welcome to Daily Chapel at Augsburg University. I'm John Schwain, one of the university pastors alongside Pastor Babette Chapman. And that was lovely. Thank you, flute ensembles, for that. And I don't think that you all coordinated it, but to have the videos of butterflies just kind of dancing around up here with the flute music, it really was a beautiful uh, kind of picture to put together. And, and we are welcoming Professor Jeremy Paul Myers, who is going to talk to us about these butterflies today, and we're grateful for that. Jeremy is a professor in the religion department and wears lots of other hats here at Augsburg. For me, the primary hat that Jeremy will always wear is that he was my high school youth director when I was a high schooler in Northwest Indiana, 2000 to 2004. And it turned out okay. See? <laughs> so here we are. Actually, Jeremy did a lot of things. One, one memory I have of Jeremy is uh, he took a lot of heat from our pastor and from our um, principal when a bunch of high schoolers decided to walk out of school uh, in protest of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. And our church was across the street, and so we walked out of high school uh, into our church and Jeremy was there and our principals came in later and were suspicious of this youth director that was there letting us young people do this. But we, we for some reason felt that the U.S. invasion with Iraq was a bad idea, but what did we know? We were just high schoolers, right? So I still remember that fondly. Um, as we prepare to receive Jeremy's reflection today, um, I welcome you in the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, life-giving God, mother to us all. And we sing together, Here I Am, Lord, which can be found in your red hymnal. If you didn't pick one up, we can bring one around. Just raise your hand.
Good morning. morning. Full disclosure, I don't know anything about butterflies. (laughs) I like poetry, and I found a pretty poem that I wanted to share today. Um, One other thing I need to share at the beginning, whenever I start to preach, I have to tell people that I'm kind of a weepy guy. Um, And so if I get a little weepy, don't worry about it. I'll be fine. I'll get through it. But expect it. Sometimes I can contain it. Sometimes I can't. Um, This morning might be one of the days I can't. We'll see. Um, So I I came across this quote uh, a while ago um, by uh, John Muir. If any of you know who John Muir is, he's, he's, he's considered to be the, the father of our national park system um, and uh, was also a very spiritual person. And, and in this funny exchange of letters between him and his brother, this is over 100 years ago, he wrote to his brother when talking about like becoming a pastor or being a preacher. He said, I think I might preach nature. I think I might preach nature like an apostle. But if I should enter the ordinary ecclesiastic pulpit, which is what I'm standing in right now, if I were to enter that, I fear I should be found preaching much that is unsanctified and unorthodox. So I'm going to preach about butterflies. <laughs> um, and I'm, honestly, really, I'm not going to preach much at all. I just want to read this poem to you and make you think about it a little bit. So it's going to be mostly the words of Mary Oliver, who's a poet who I've come to really appreciate. It's going to be mostly her words, with some of my words scattered throughout. Um, It's printed in your bulletin, so I I encourage you to follow along in your bulletin if you wish. If you just want to close your eyes and listen, you can do that. If you want to watch the butterflies up there, you can do that. This is a two-hour video I found on YouTube of butterflies. And I'm just hoping that it's only butterflies and that no one embedded some kind of raunchy thing in there. So Janice is watching it and is ready to hit pause if we need to, but we're hoping it's just butterflies. So let's do some unsanctified, unorthodox preaching this morning. Don't bother me, I've just been born. This is probably the butterfly speaking, or maybe it's actually you speaking right now. Either way, it kind of begs the question, in what ways are you still, right now, in this moment, still being born? In what ways are you being born right now? Don't bother me, I've just been born. The butterfly's loping flight carries it through the country of the leaves delicately and well enough to get it to where it wants to go, wherever that is, stopping here and there to fuzzle the damp throats of flowers. There's a new word for you, fuzzle. Stopping here and there to fuzzle the damp throats of flowers and the black mud. Up and down it swings, frenzied and aimless. And sometimes, for long, delicious moments, it's perfectly lazy. Maybe I do know something about butterflies. I can, I can do that. Sometimes it's perfectly lazy, riding motionless in the breeze on the soft stalk of some ordinary flower. The god of dirt came up to me many times and said so many wise and delectable things to me. I lay on the grass listening to his dog voice, crow voice, frog voice. Now, he said, and now, but never once mentioned forever. These words get me. See, I'm crying already because I knew these words were coming. See, we're never promised. We are never, never, never promised forever. We're only promised right now. 
we have now or never promised forever. I am okay. I just get weepy. I'm not sad. I promise you that. Spring tulips right now, if you look, I think outside of the president's door maybe. I, I don't know if they're coming up yet, but I know this time of the year sometimes right outside the president's door, Memorial Hall, that's where I usually see the first flowers coming up on campus because it stays warm in the sun. So you, you'll start to see flowers come up there, but even those flowers, when they come up, we get so excited about it, but they're only there now. They're not there forever, right? And that's sad. But then when it snows on a day like today, we can also tell ourselves it's only snowing now. It's not going to be here forever. We're only promised the now. We're not promised forever. And if we don't know how to be in the now, if we can't be in the now, then we'll never be in the forever. Track me here. If we can't be in the now, we'll never be in the forever because when that forever becomes the now, then once again, we're going to be wishing for forever. <laughs> you with me? You can only be in the now. And if you can't be in the now, you'll never know you're forever because the forever is always going to be something different than what you're doing right now. So learn to be here now because we don't have forever. Back to Mary Oliver's words, stanza four. She says that... In, uh, the, the, the God of dirt has said now and now and never once mentioned forever, which has nevertheless always been like a sharp iron hoof in the center of my mind. And one of the things I love about Mary Oliver is that it, uh, uh, enlightenment or awareness or learning comes, always comes for her from nature. And sometimes it's the gentleness of the butterfly and sometimes it's a horse hoof to the forehead, right? Wake up call. I'd rather have the butterfly as my wake up call. How does this desire, how does our desire to reach out and grasp the future, to make it happen right now and to hold it, how does that desire become a sharp iron hoof in the center of your mind? where your fear of the future, your hope for the future, your dream of the future becomes this thing that prevents you from imagining yourself in the, fully in this moment, right now, with these people here and now. Mary goes on to say, one or two things are all you need to travel over the blue pond, over the deep roughage of the trees, and through the stiff flowers of lightning. Just two things, she says, one or two things. And this is um, what she says. What you need is some deep memory of pleasure and some cutting knowledge of pain. These are the one or two things that she mentions in her title. These are the only two things we need to navigate life, the life of the now, the life of right now. These are the only two things we need. A deep memory of pleasure, which we all have, and a cutting knowledge of pain, which we all have. Every moment, every now, carries both pleasure and pain, but neither of those things will last forever. But to lift that hoof, she says, to lift that hoof from the center of your mind, you need an idea. And the butterfly happens to have an idea. The butterfly happens to have an idea. Mary goes on to say, for years and years I struggled just to love my life. And then the butterfly rose, weightless in the wind, and said, don't love your life too much and vanished into the world. The butterfly says, don't love your life too much because the butterfly knows from its own experience that a new you is about to be born. There it goes. Just now, it just happened. A new you was just born. Oh, it happened again. It keeps happening, right? So... I'll end with this. I won't bother you because you've just been born. Summer.
Now go in peace. Be like butterflies, reborn into God's creative and marvelous love, appreciating every moment the power of now. Thanks be to God. And also, stay for some more music from our flute ensemble, please, as we watch some more fuzzling on the screen.